One garden that's giving us a lot of color here in the summertime is our amaranth theme garden. Now these are a collection of plants in the Amaranthaceae or the amaranth family. And as you can see, it's quite a diverse family. We have all sorts of shapes and sizes and forms and types of plants in this family. They make really good ornamentals, especially for those of us here in Oklahoma, because they're very heat tolerant. A lot of the plants in this family are from subtropical or tropical parts of the world, and they are no stranger to the heat. They're also really great for our gardens because they're easy to grow. A lot of these plants can be started from seed sown directly into the soil. Just scatter a few seeds where you want them to come up and grow. Well, the amaranth plants are also useful because some of them are edible. Some of them have seeds that have been used and are still used as a food source. And we've got some seeds of some of the amaranth down here. You can see they're very shiny usually a dark color, either black or dark purple, but these can be ground into flour, and they can also be popped, sort of like popcorn, for a tiny little snack. But amaranth seeds have been used as a food source by the ancient Aztecs, the Mayans, the Hopi, and several other native tribes. Well, we like growing these plants for their ornamental qualities. We have colorful flowering amaranthus, and we also have colorful foliage plants. And right down here, we have Joseph's coat. And this plant is used quite a bit in formal annual displays. It's a little foliage plant, comes in the colors of gold, green. There's a variegated white form of Joseph's coat. Right over here, we have a really neat dark reddish purple one known as red threads. And you can see those leaves are very narrow, very thread-like. But uh, these are sometimes used to create shapes and they're sheared to maybe spell out a name or to create some sort of marquee or something like that. Right over here is a plant that looks sort of like a Joseph's coat, only a lot bigger. This is purple alternanthera. And I just love that dark purple foliage. I mean, there's so much you can do with this plant in different designs in the garden. You see how it contrasts very well with the golden moneywort down there. Now, one trick to keep this looking tidy is to keep pinch pinching the tips back so that it will become a lot bushier and a lot showier. Well, right back here, we've got some small flowering plants in this family, the celosias. And right down here, we've got a celosia. And the celosias come in two flowering forms, or two flowering groups, the plumosa group and the cristata group. This is the plumosa group, sometimes known as wheat celosia. The flowers are in plumes, or they sort of look like maybe feather dusters. And if you think about the flowers of celosias, or the amaranths in general, the flower heads are made up of a lot of little tiny flowers, but this frilly look, this sort of soft, prickly sort of appearance is due to a lot of little bracts or bracklets, other little showy parts of the flower that are associated with the flowers that give a bulk, a lot of the, the bulk of the color. Well, this is the plumosa type celosia. Right over here, we have the cristata or the crested celosia. And these are sometimes referred to as the coxcomb, or what I like, the brain celosia. And you can see that this sort of looks like a brain. And this must be a really smart plant because it has a huge brain. Right over here, you can see what the uh, crested type look like as they're developing. You can see those, those flower heads sort of uh, making that, that, that interesting brain-like appearance. And it'll get fuller and uh, will kind of make that round shape. What, right back here, we have the globe amaranth. This is another type of plant in the amaranthus family. But you can see their flower heads are sort of like clover. There are these dense little heads here at the end. This one's called all around purple. And again, the bulk of the color is from those bracts. And you can see the tiny little yellowish or yellowish white flowers down inside there. We move from that to some of the taller ones, like the Love Lies Bleeding right here. Very showy, tall amaranth. Those strings 
of flowers kind of cascading there, very showy. The breeders have developed the fat spike amaranth, uh, sort of a version on the same love lies bleeding type of plant. And right over here, we've got some of the, of the other traditional amaranth type plants that I, what I think a lot of people think of when they think of amaranthus. The summer poinsettia is a common name for this type of plant. The leaves up here at the top of the plant give the bulk of the color. The flowers not really showy at all down here in the axis of the leaves. This one's called illumination. Right back here, we've got one called aurora. Then some of the other taller plumose type of amaranths in the background. These are so easy to grow. Just sow the seed where you want them to come up and you get quite a display. These are very popular for the cut flower trade and they also make great dried arrangements as well. This one's called Hopi Red Dye. This one has a really neat name. It's called Hot Biscuits. Well, the next time you want a really showy, heat tolerant plant in your garden, you might try growing a few members of the amaranthus family.